So now we have our front bodice and now I'm going to show you guys what method you're going to use to attach your pieces. And the same thing that I'm going to be telling you to do to this piece is what you're going to be using for all of your pieces. So for example, if this was the actual main fabric, you, this would be the right side up and this would be the inside. So for attaching your pieces, remember I said that we had to do those, those slashes. Those slashes are going to let you know where you're going to be matching all your initial pieces. So I'm going to take both the the back that I have and I'm going to put them facing down and kind of laying them next to each other. So I'm going to take my backs and have them facing the front and the right side of the front bodice. So the right side or the front side or the fabric side of my backs are gonna be facing the fabric side of my front. And the reason why it's a little more difficult to see that here is because normally, obviously if it was actual fabric, this would be, for example, if it was satin, it would be a shinier surface here and a more matte surface here. So it'd be very obvious which were the front, the facing, the sides that should be facing up. But because we're using a muslin and they have equal sides on both sides, you're just going to use without the markings. So the, so the side with the markings are just going to be kissing the sides with the markings. And the sides without the markings are going to be facing outward, if that makes sense. So after I do that, I'm going to go in and begin connecting those fabrics. So what I always do is I start at the bottom and pin up, I start out and then pin in. So some people, if they had this, sometimes I think your first inclination is to connect the armholes first. I learned over time that it's better to connect them at the bottom of the fabric. That way you can ensure at least the bottom is going to match and any adjustments that need to be made can be made more towards the top. It's a lot easier to adjust up here at the armhole than it is at the waist. And I get my pins. These sides belong together because they have corresponding slashes. So the back side and the front side have corresponding slashes. Now these happen to meet up exactly. That might not always be the case, but that's why you always want to make sure you're marking every piece. I'm going to pull in that dart as well and include it in the connection. And I'm just going to keep going up. And that's going to be one side. Then I'm going to go and now I'm going to connect the shoulder seams. And you'll notice here again, I'm just matching up those slashes that I created. I'm just going to make sure they match and I'm going to go to the very corner and put my first pin in. Make sure those are matching up. First pin in, keep going. You'll notice here on the shoulder seam that there seems to be like a little bit of excess fabric. That's the way it's supposed to be. So don't get nervous when you see that this is not exactly stopping the way this was because this is the key right here. This you'll see what needs to happen when we add the facing, but right now this is just the way it's supposed to be. And I'm going to do the same for the other side. I'm going to make sure those right sides or the sides that are marked are facing each other. I'm going to take my pin. So this is what it looks like. So you open it up and you can already start to see the way things are looking. So remember we said we do our basting stitch. So I'm gonna go, like you can go in and actually draw in, because remember we said after the pattern told us that this was, this seam was one inch. That's what the pattern told us. The waist seam was one inch. 
So if that's what the pattern said to do, you can go in with your ruler all around if it makes you feel more comfortable and just mark that one inch. And do the same thing for the side seams and the sh shoulder seams. Then you're gonna go ahead and baste on that line that you created, like we did with the dart. You do the hand basting or you could do the machine basting at stitch length five. five. You're gonna do the actual machi machine stitch. And you're gonna do the same thing for the skirt when you attach the side seams of the skirt. We're gonna leave the back seam completely open and when we come back, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to connect the top to the bottom of the skirt. So I just wanted to show you guys a couple of things. This is our skirt. I know in the notes there's some photos of what the skirt looks like separately. So I just wanted to show you guys what it looked like pulled together. The waist area, our darts, so this is the back, this is the front, how we pressed open those seams. And then if you flip it this way, this is the top of the garment, the bodice area, and the two back pieces. So what are we looking at now? Right now you're looking at the waist area. So as you can see, I've already pinned it to kind of show how we're connecting the waist area to get that waist seam. And how did I do that? Well, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna immediately go and match up the side seams first. So as soon as you have your uh, pieces of muslin together, your top and bottom portions, you wanna go and put your first pin in the corresponding side seams. Cause that's gonna really anchor you down and let you know what to do next. I think it's uh, maybe a natural inclination just to go directly to that center front, but I've learned over time, if you go directly to the side seams and connect those with the pin first, it's easier to then connect the rest. So once I got my side seams pinned, then I go and I start to pin my darts. And the, and the, the only dart that should be standing on its own is the final dart on the back. So the back dart should line up, the side seam should line up, then you have a, a dart here, then you have the princess seam dart that should line up. Same thing here. You have your rogue dart over here, and then you have your princess seam dart that should match up, your corresponding side seam, your back darts, and then your road dart over here. So once you've got them pinned all together, you might notice that if you, if the reason why I don't start from here, because as you can see, there's a little bit of excess here. It gets very confusing. And as you're continuously trying to fine tune, especially this part, you don't want to get bogged down by things not matching the way they don't, it doesn't seem as if things are matching. So sometimes it just requires like a little bit of manipulation, like see this, if I started from this end, all my darts would have been off because I would assume this pucker meant something. It's usually just ease and about you just really pinning it down. And if I don't tell you to base anything else, you should always base down the waist because of that very reason. The fabric sort of wants to pucker and then it moves. So if you put this in the sewing machine and you didn't base it first, all these pieces are gonna move And then all your darts and all your side seams that you beautifully match with the pinning process, they're gonna be all over the place. So once you feel good about that all the points are matching, your side seams are matching up, those princess darts are matching up, the back darts are matching up, then you just go in and like you did for all the other seams, you baste. And this also is a, for my measurements, I've been using a 5 8 I just want a full disclosure, but the, the that's only because that's what I normally use, 5 8 So my, my uh, fitting might be a little bit more 
uh, loose because I'm using the 5 eighths. So it's going to be a little bit bigger. Yours might be a little bit tighter depending on what size you did. But you will go in and again, mark that one inch from the edge and then stitch and make sure that when you're stitching, that's why it's very good to base. If you don't base before, what's going to happen is you're going to run it over the machine and then it's going to be like, you want them all to go in the same direction. You want all the closures that you have to go in the same direction again, because when you open this up, if there's any darts that are folded in weird ways that you haven't pressed the seams, once you open this and then press that center seam in the waist, it's gonna be bunching because you haven't made sure everything is pressed down. So you wanna make sure that the darts are flat and that when you're basting, that you make sure that you have basted down the dart so that the machine can go over it nice and smoothly. So I'm gonna run my seam across here. I'm gonna press open the waist and I'm actually going to put this on the dress horn but not show you guys just yet because I wanna briefly go over the sleeve and how to install an inset sleeve. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe videos covering dressmaking, fashion, lectures, and more. Enroll in Lady Cloth U on Teachable for dressmaking and fashion design courses. See you again soon.